Welcome Protégé. In the last tutorial, we showed you how to send the input from the keypad to the serial monitor within the Arduino IDE. In this project, instead of sending commands from the UNO to the host, we're going to send commands from the host to the UNO. And based on the commands we receive, we'll display a certain output on the LED bar graph. Now if you went through project 3, we mentioned that you should keep the bar graph on the breadboard because we will be using it in this project. But if you don't have the LED bar graph installed, then we'll show you how to quickly do that. Now the LED bar graph consists of 10 LEDs and you want to make sure that this notch in the top right corner is oriented like so. And you want to place the LED bar graph over the valley of the breadboard. Next we have the 470 ohm resistor and we have pin 1 of the resistor array tied to ground. Each LED within the bar graph will have a series resistor and that's to limit the current to each LED. So if you went through project 3 you can remove the male to male jumpers and install the four jumpers on LEDs 7 through 10 which if you have the LED oriented with the notch in the top right corner those LEDs will be on the left and these will be outputs from the UNO and we place these on the anode side of the LED bar graph and next we're going to wire the other end of the jumper to the UNO pins once you have the LED bar graph wired up on the breadboard, we can now wire the male jumpers to the Arduino. And first we're going to wire LED 7 to pin 2. And the reason why we start at pin 2 is because 0 and 1 are the TX and RX channels and we use those to communicate with the host. Okay, all our hardware is wired up for the LED bar graph. And next we have to supply power to the breadboard via the female banana jacks on the fuel can. So the fuel can comes with these banana jack to test lead clips. Comes with a black and a red one. You want to plug the banana jack side into the ground female banana jack and the red one into the plus 5 volts female banana jack and then use the test lead clip to attach it to these male headers. We have plus 5 volts routed to the breadboard and now we have ground routed to the breadboard. Now we're going to walk you through the software. First we'll go over the variable declarations and we only have one which we call RX data and we initialize that to zero. We use this variable in our switch statement and this data gets returned when we call the function serial.read. Next we have our void setup and this is where we set the pin mode for pins 2 through 5. Now I have a for loop here so we can get rid of some redundant code. And once we go into the for loop we set pins 2 through 5 as an output since these will be driving the LEDs. Next we have to initialize the UART channel by using the func function serial.begin and we pass in the argument of 9600 for the baud rate. Next we have our void loop function and first we check to see if any serial data has been received from the host. And we do that using a function called serial.available and here we check if that is greater than zero and if it is then we have received data so we go inside of this if statement. Next we don't want to Go ahead and retrieve that data by calling the function serial.read and we put that data into this variable rxdata. 
And next we use serial.println to print the RX data back to the serial monitor. You don't necessarily need this, but it's just a, a debugging tool in case you're not seeing the output on your LED bar graph, but you are seeing it on the serial monitor, then you know something is wrong with your LED circuits. Next we have a switch statement, and this switch, switch statement will choose the correct case based on the on the variable rx data. For example, if rx data is zero, then we will go to case zero and perform the perform the code that's within this this case. And the code within this will set the LEDs to zero 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 zero. If rx data is a one, then we will go to case one and then we we will perform the code within this case which is setting the LEDs to 0001 and we have cases 0 through 9 next I'll pull up the serial monitor make sure you have your baud rate set to 9600 in the bottom right corner here now we can start sending the commands to the UNO and make sure we get the correct output on the LED bar graph Now when the when the data gets returned, we sent the we sent a zero to the Uno and got a 48. The reason why we get a 48 is because that's the ASCII equivalent to zero. And then 10 is the ASCII equivalent for the new line character. So we sent a zero to the Uno and don't have an output on the LED bar graph, which is expected since when we go into case zero, we set the LEDs to zero 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 zero. So we'll go ahead and send a 1, 2, and I'll just go ahead and test all of the cases to make sure they're all correct. And that's it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe below or leave a comment.